This is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and good morning. God bless you. And I am so glad this morning. Today is Father's Day. And my name is Pastor A.D., Pastor Truvine, NBC here in Houston, Texas. I thank you so much for joining us. And we are going to celebrate Father's Day today. I have a great message for all the fathers to all the fathers all around the world. Every father around the world. I have a great message for you today. And today I want you to take notes and really sit back and relax and enjoy this message. The topic today is the perfect gift to make your father happy. The perfect gift to make your father happy. And so I'm going to pray and we're going to jump right into it. Thank you again for joining us. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. We glorify you. We thank you, dear God. And Lord, we ask you would bless all the fathers, dear God, all around the world. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, touch their souls. And dear God, help them, dear God. Help them, dear God, to be better fathers, dear God. Loving fathers, kind fathers, dear God. Dear God, fathers, dear God, they would teach their sons, teach their daughters, dear God how to be holy, dear God, godly fathers, Lord. We thank you so much, dear God, for everything you're doing, dear God. And with this message, dear God, we ask, dear God, that you would please, dear God, let it flow within our hearts, let it flow within our minds, dear God, and touch us, dear God, please, dear God, to help us be better fathers, dear God, and touch the cho children, dear God, to make their parents happy, dear God, to make their parents smile and be joyful and to rejoice, dear God, in you, dear God. Please help them to make the right decisions, Lord. We love you and we bless your holy name. He who has near let him be with the Spirit says to the church, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Again, happy Father's Day to all the fathers and a special shout out to my father, Anthony Paul, and to all the men who played a special role in my life. Today's message is going to be different. It's going to be different, similar to a Bible study, a Bible study message for Father's Day. And we will be examining various scriptures. While forming this message, I thought about how can my children, how can they continue to make me happy, joyful, proud? Um, to speak for the majority of fathers, I can tell you what we don't want our children to do is not to buy us no more ties. We, we as fathers, we don't want any more ties. We don't want any more socks or underwear. We have enough of those for Father's Day, okay? <laughs> we have enough of that for Father's Day. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure a lot of fathers can agree with. We have enough of that for Father's Day. So, all the Father's Days in the past, we received all those things, ties, socks, underwear, on and on. However, uh, so what can they do? What can children do to make us happy? What can they do to make us happy, to make the fathers proud and joyful? So I, I just want to examine a few scriptures, a few scriptures, and I have three points, three points about making what makes a father a father uh, joyful, rejoice, and happy, and excited? What is the perfect gift for a father? What, how can a child make his dad smile? How can he do that? How can he make him, uh, how can he impress him? How, how can he um, make him really joyful? And so I just want to talk about that just for a minute. And I have three points. And, it, and it's real quick, three little points about making the father happy, the perfect gift for a father. And so point number one is coming from Proverbs verse eight, Proverbs chapter one, verse eight, Proverbs chapter one, verse eight. And it reads, my son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. And then we have Proverbs chapter four, verse one, hear my children, the instruction of a father and give attention to no understanding. Very important. And then we have Proverbs 23, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22. Listen to your father who begot you and do not despise your mother when she is old. And so the first point is listen to your father. Listen to your father. Children, you can make your father happy if you listen to your father. That can be the perfect gift if you listen to your father. The first thing you can do to make your father happy is to listen to what he has told you. Are there any fathers who are watching who have a child or, or, or you have children who don't listen to you? You don't listen to your children reach a place and age in life where they 
think they know more than their parents. And I'm telling you, I know that for a fact. Um, and so we have children today that, that start very young, at a very young age, uh, and they think they know everything. You can't tell them nothing. They think they know everything. They don't want to listen. And, and I mean, you can't tell them nothing. My children have done some things that I have told them not to do. And they thought they found out the hard way that I was right after learning a lesson, after learning a lesson. They had to learn the hard way. They had to really be taught a lesson. I, I tried to tell them, but they wouldn't listen. And to be honest about it, we treat we treated our parents the same way when we were young. We did the same exact thing. However, kids today are a little bit smarter, so they start a little bit younger, and they think they know every single thing. Uh, we thought we knew it all too. We could uh, our parents couldn't tell us nothing. We and the thing about it, we didn't have a clue about this world, what this world was about, what life was about. We didn't have a clue, but we went out there to find out on our own though our parents already instructed us about life, but we didn't want to listen to them. We, we thought they were lame. We thought they were, uh, wasn't hip. We thought they were old, you know, so why listen to them? Um, we were ignorant to the fact of living and we just went out into the world, walking out with, with, with blinders on and just acting a fool. And you know, that's why the Bible say when I was a child, I thought as a child, I acted as a child. Hmm. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And so children, listen to your fathers, because the thing about it, when you get a certain age, you're going to learn how to put away childish things. But you don't want to find out life on your own. You want to listen to your fathers, listen to your mother, listen to your parents and, and listen to their instruction and let them um, that they may um, steer you in the right direction. And so. As fathers, that is our job. Our job is to steer our children in the right direction. But the children today are, the, are a little different because they have a sense of entitlement. They are, they're spoiled. They're spoiled. They're, um, some of them are not respectful or, or don't have a godly sense of guidance. And some of that really falls on us. It really falls on the parenting. It really does. Um, another thing that gets to me as a father is, when, when you have, when you've been saying the same thing over and over and over and over continuously and they still don't listen, after a while, that gets old. It gets real old after a while. Now you want to whoop because see, back in the day, uh, you know, go back and, you know, in my time of rearing and before me, uh, you couldn't, uh, the, the <laughs> your parents weren't going to tell you, keep telling you things over and over and over again. You were going to get a, a whooping or a beating, whatever you want to call it, um, you were going to get the rod, put it like that. You were going to get whipped. And so that's the thing. And, 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 and it gets old after a while. You keep saying the same thing over and over and they still not getting, they still doing what they want to do. But I'm telling you, as a father, we must take lead. We, may, we must take charge and put our foot down and take hold of our child or children and let them know what's real. Let them know that you're not playing around. And sometimes for some children, you have to let them learn about life on their own, the hard way, because some children just won't learn from word of mouth or by word of mouth. They won't learn that way. They won't learn from being instructed. No, they have to go out and experience the world for themselves. And that's just true. They do. Some do. Some don't. So you try to tell them what not to do because you already have experience in that field at some point in your past life, but they don't think you know. So they go and do it anyway. Do whatever they want to do, regardless of what you said. They go against your very words. So children, listen to your father. Daddy knows best. Your father's counsel should be more likened to than any of your friend's counsel. So listen to your father. He's there to lead you, direct you, instruct you, cover you, get you straight and keep you on the right path. He is a steward that God placed over your life. Instead of saying your father is lame, he's old school, um, don't know anything, just listen to your father. And father, you should, you should make your child listen. You should push them to listen. You should want them to listen. You should instruct them to listen, to do the right thing, to go down the right path, to go down the right road. That is our job as 
fathers to teach them not to make the same mistakes that you made, but to be better than you are. And that's the thing. We should instruct our children as men and be there and teach them and instruct them on how to be young men and young women. And that's how we should be. And that's what we should be doing, teaching them how to be godly children, godly children. Because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so our second point we come to is coming from the book of Proverbs. All these verses are coming from Proverbs. Proverbs chapter five, verse one. Proverbs chapter five, verse one. And it reads, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Lend your ear to my understanding. And then we have Proverbs chapter 10, verse one. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. Hmm. And then we have Proverbs 15 and 20 for our second point. And it reads, a wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despises his mother. So the second point is a child learns how to think. A child learns how to think. That's how you make a father happy. When, you, when, a, when he knows that his child is learning how to think. He's learning. The child learns how to think. Learns wisdom. Learns knowledge. Um, learns to know God. Learns uh, um, God's morals and godly morals and learning to read the Bible and, and learning these things throughout the Bible on life and, and how to live a godly life. And so that is what makes a father happy. So wisdom is looking at a life from God's perspective. It's about teaching your children, developing a thought process on how to think, how to think outside of the box, how to be creative, how to conquer some things um, um, and certain things, ways to think, levels of thinking, okay? But we live in a generation with children who don't know how to think. They just do whatever. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, they just do whatever. Um, and, and, and they just go with whatever. Whatever the culture is doing, that's what they want to do. Whatever the atmosphere brings, that's what they want to do. Uh, whatever whatever um, they see their friends do, that's what they want to do. And to have wisdom, to have knowledge means you know how to process things. You may, and you may, pro, you may use process of elimination. You got to learn how to eliminate certain things and use that process of elimination. Just don't go with your first thought. Don't, don't go with your first thought. Don't just react off your first instinct. No, you process a different perspective. The world will look at things from a carnal, humanistic viewpoint, and they do. Thus, the world, look, they look at it from a carnal, humanistic viewpoint. You remember, we were once in a world, and that's what we looked at. Um, Things worldly, in a worldly view, in a worldly vision. That's that's what you would look at. You would look at things through the eyes of the world, not of God. And so, and so, children, your children are growing up, and they're following the world. They're following the culture. They're following what they see on TV. They're doing what they see on TV. And there's a lot of things that shouldn't be on TV that's on TV. But as fathers, we should be teaching them the right things to do, and that's the godly things, the biblical things, what God would want us to do, not what. Uh, the world would want us to do, want them to do, but what would God want you to do in life? And by thinking the way the world thinks, that will get them in some serious trouble. It will get your children in some serious trouble. So what I tell my children, let's look at the situation from a godly perspective, a godly viewpoint. Let's examine this situation. Let's think about this situation. You give me a scenario and I'm going to tell you from a godly perspective. Uh, viewpoint. I'm gonna give you the answer from a godly viewpoint. I'm, I'm gonna let you know um, how would God feel about this, or, or or how would this be? Let's use the process of elimination. Let's eliminate certain things. Let's move some things around. Let's let's look at things from a different perspective than what you're looking um, than what you're looking from. So, for example, for example, I'm gonna give you a few, a couple examples. Young men, when you choose a wife, you don't choose to marry her only from a sexual standpoint you don't you don't look at it like that that's not that's not <laughs> it doesn't make sense to look at it like that yeah it, the sex may be good however you don't look at it that way and, and men that's men can tell you that grown mature men that's in christ they can tell you that no you don't look at a woman just because just because she fine you don't look at a woman uh and, and just go off oh because she uh she's um sexual um enhanced that 
sexually enhanced that, okay, this is the woman I want to marry. That's not what you look at. That's not the only thing you go by. It's a good thing to look at. However, it's not what you stand on. That's not the, the, the viewpoint. That's not the, the, um, the, 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 what you want, the main perspective. That's not what you want to settle for. No, she might look fine, but can she cook? She may be pretty, but can she clean house? Uh, uh, can she be a mother? Do she make money? Is she a wife material? Is she wife material? Is she wifey material? What is she? I mean, is she smart? Does she have education? What? I mean, what does she offer? What else can she offer other than her looks? What else can she offer other than the bedroom? What else can she offer? Any woman can put on makeup in a beautiful white dress and walk down the aisle and cut a cake. Any woman can do that. But, but can she be the wife who will stick with you through thick and thin? I'm not talking about when you got it going on. No, but, but when you're down and the money is funny, can she still be your honey? I'm telling you, can she still be, will she, will she still be there by your side? You got to think about these things, um, young men who are in Christ. You got to think about these things and don't just go off of a, of a um, sexual impression. That's not what you should be doing. No, you got to think about these things. You got to really think about it. Even young women, you got the same thing when it comes to men. You got to think about that. What can he offer? What does he bring to the table? Who is he? Um, you know, all these things. I mean, you got to look at the background, where you from and all. I mean, on and on. You just don't settle just because a sexual preference. No, you don't do that uh, because he's good in bed. No, or he or she's good in bed. That's not it. You don't look at it like that. Um, but fathers, we want you to have an open mind. That's what fathers, fathers want their children to have an open mind, a broader thinking, godly thinking. And, and they want them to think like they think. They want them to think like they think now. They Because fathers used to, when they were young, well, we used to think that way, that the way children think. However, now we're grown and we have and we have great things. We have wisdom. We have knowledge. We have understanding. We, we have the word of God that we go by. And, and as, as godly men, we want to lead our children in the right direction. We want to lead our children in a in a right way we want to lead our children down the right path and that is what we were supposed to do we are the stewards god has placed us as stewards over our children and so as fathers we should be the head we should be leading our family we should be uh bringing our family to church we should be um telling our family about the Lord. We should be praying with our family and loving our family and caring for our family and showing them how a man loves their family. And to all the women, the same thing. Somebody should howl out, think, wake up, children, think, and do some research. I'm telling you, I try to teach my children on how to think from God's vantage point, how to think from God's vantage point. Not just hearing the word, but being doers of the word of God. And that's the thing we got to learn to teach our children, not just to hear the word, but be doers of the word. Learn, um, teach them how to be doers. As fathers, we should be teaching our family how to be doers of the word, just not hearers of the word, but doers. Teach your children and guide them and stop doing um, things that you don't want them to do in front of them. I'm telling you, don't don't get drunk in front of them. Don't be smoking in front of them. No, get away from that stuff. Um, don't do things in front of them that that because to be honest, a young man, a young a little boy, he looks up to his father and his father is his superhero. And so that's his Superman. And he feels that nothing can stop this Superman. He feels that all and he puts all his confidence in this Superman and he and he believes in this man and he and he cares for this man because this is his father and he wants to be just like his father. And whatever he sees his father do, he also wants to do. And so we have to be mindful of that. We have to be mindful that, of that as fathers. I do too. As fathers, we have to be mindful of um, what are we letting our children see? What are we letting our children, um, what are they, um, what, are, what are they receiving from us as men, as, as growing up? Really little boys. I mean, I'm telling you, little boys, very important, little boys um, watching their fathers grow up, watching their fathers as they grow up. I mean, um, what are they, what are you doing in the house? What are you doing around the house? What are you teaching them? Um, how are you influencing them? How are you um, controlling the house? What are you doing? How are you running the house? Are you going to work? Are you not working? Are you staying at home because you don't want to go to work? Are you cussing out your wife in front of them? What are you doing at home as, as a man, as a godly man? But in order to make your father happy, you must listen 
first of all, and you must think, think. You must think to make your father happy. And that brings us to the third point. That brings us to our third point. And um, our third point is, and our last point, which is our last point, is doing what's right. Doing what's right, acting righteously. Doing what's right and acting righteously. Three simple points. Doing what's right. A father loves when his child is doing what's right. A father loves when his child is doing what's right, when they're acting righteously. They're doing the right thing. They're acting right. They're behaving right. So that's coming from Proverbs chapter 23, verse 24. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice, and he who begets a wise child will delight in him. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. He will be happy. He will be excited. He will be elated. He will be joyful. And he who begets a wise, a wise child will delight in him. And so wise fathers makes wise children. Some people, some children want to see the verses, have to see the verses within the Bible that says thou shalt not do this or that in order to stop what they know they shouldn't be doing. Okay, you know it's wrong. It seemed like it's wrong, but you want to do it because you don't see it in the Bible saying, thou shalt not sin, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not drink, thou shalt not smoke, thou shalt not get high, thou shalt not do, thou shalt not this and that. And so you want us to point it out to you. You know people like that. They want you to point it out to you in the Bible where it says you can't do this and you can't do that. Thou shalt not live this type of lifestyle. Thou shalt not go these certain places. And you want us to point it out, knowing that it's wrong, knowing that it's wrong. You're just trying to um, create an argument. You're just trying to defend your sin, defend your mess, defend your drama, knowing that it's wrong. But a, a father loves a child and admires the child and, and really boasts and, and, and proud of the child and brags about the child when the child is doing righteous acts when the child is doing what's right so why play around with god about the act that you're doing knowing that it's wrong why do that why play around with god knowing knowing what you're doing is wrong and that's the first one we want to try to satisfy is god we put god first before our parents so if god is first before and before our parents we should be trying to satisfy god and if we satisfy god Honestly, you're going to satisfy who? Your parents, because we're godly parents. And so you'll satisfy, my children will satisfy me if they satisfy God. And that just, that, that goes together. Yes, it does. It goes together. Very similar. So why play around with God when you know what the scripture says are the biblical characters who receive judgment by God because they were doing the same wrong you were doing. So why mess around with God? Why even play with fire? Why even try to get burned? Why even present an argument when it's not really an argument because you know you're wrong? Why even do that? Why try to go against what the Bible says? The Bible never changes. It stays the same. There's nothing, nothing changes within the Bible unless a person changes. But other than that, nothing changes in the Bible. The Bible never changes. So it's hard to present an argument against the Bible when it says it right there in the Bible or it gives an example of one of the biblical characters in the Bible of doing wrong and God had to correct them. So if you want to make your father happy, stop doing certain things you know that you shouldn't be doing. Act right. Do what's right in the eyes of the Lord. Be righteous in the eyes of God. Stop always doing whatever the culture saying is right. And that's the thing. Today, man, they have so much social media. I mean, it's so many things you can go to. TikTok, on and on. I mean, you, you we can go on. We can go all day. Facebook, on and on. I mean, certain things. I mean, all day long, you can go talking about social media pages. However, stop always doing what the culture is saying on social media. Whatever the culture is saying on social media, that's what the children jump to. I mean, they jump to it. They jump to it. They go with it. And, and, and the thing about it, if the culture says it's okay to pop pills, then they want to pop pills. The culture says it's okay to be on drugs, then they want to be on drugs. They're going to do it. They're going to be on drugs. Um, so, But stop doing what the culture says or, 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 or doing 
whatever they're doing, but do what's right. Do what's right in the eyes of the Lord. Do what the Bible says. Do what God says. You hear me, children of God? Do what God says. If you want to make your father happy, do what the Lord says. Go the right way. Don't go the wrong way. Go, go forward. Don't go backwards. Go and follow the Lord. Follow the Lord. I'm telling you, that's the best way you can go in order to make your father happy. So because the thing about it, the thing about it is after you've had pills, I'm going to tell you this because I have experience. After you had pills, after you have, have, have all, all these drugs, you, you've done these things, you, you've done, you, you drank all the alcohol, all the alcohol you have consumed. Now, hmm, your life is messed up. Your life is messed up after taking all these drugs, trying to follow the culture, doing all these things. Now your life is messed up because you were so devoted to listening to the culture. You were so devoted to listening to the celebrities and all the people on the social media. You were so devoted to doing that. You were so devoted to exploiting your body on social media. You were so devoted to doing, uh, uh, to, to being hard and calling yourself tough, to have this, uh, to fit in, to, to, to um, grow your reputation. You, you were so devoted to doing these things, but now your future is in shambles. It's in shambles. But life's temptations always starts with something light and leads to something heavier. Let me say that again. Life's temptations always starts with something light and it leads with something heavier. I'm telling you, it does. It just grows. It just grows. You try one thing, then the next thing you know, you'll be doing another thing. Then you try one drug and next thing you know, you'll be doing some more drugs. The next thing you know, every day, you daily, you need a fix. Daily, you need to fix because now you're addicted and your name is addiction. You become the addiction. And so the thing about it, what your parents, what your father is trying to do, he's trying to lead you from that path. He's trying to lead you from being in that cycle. He's trying to lead you from being in that type of culture and that type of lifestyle because he's been there. He's done that. He's experienced that. Or oh, if he haven't, he knows somebody who's been in that um, situation before that was once close to him. And so what he's trying to do, he's trying to lead you out of that. He's trying to guide you out of that. He's trying to pull you away from that mess, away from that situation, away from those people. He's trying to get you away from those type of friends because they're really not friends, though they call themselves and though you call them friends, but they're really not friends. And he's trying to pull you out of that thing. But in order to make your father happy, in order to make God happy, you must act righteously. In order to make your father happy, that, that, that birth you, you must act righteously. I'm telling you, you must act righteously and you must be in right in the right standings with God. You must be in the right standings with God. Don't mess up your life. Don't throw your life down. Don't throw your life down a hole. Don't throw your life, that flush your life down a drain. Don't give your life up to the devil. No, submit to Christ and come to Christ and stay in Christ. Don't go back. Don't go back with the same folks. You got to learn to separate yourself from other folks. You got to learn to separate and move on from different people and get into different atmospheres and godly atmospheres. Get around folks that's in the gospel. Get around folks, children that's in the gospel to make, and I'm telling you, you will make your father happy if you do the right things. If you get your education, you do the right thing. Um, you submit to God. You follow Christ. You do the right things. I'm telling you, you will make your father happy if you do that. That would be the perfect gift to make your father happy if you do that. Don't act on what your friends say and on what the celebrities you see today say or do. No, but think on what does the word of God say? What does the word of God say? What, what's God's attitude about, about it, what you're doing? What is his attitude? If you want to give me a gift, Leave the world alone. I'm telling you, if my children want to give me a gift, just leave the world alone. Leave the world alone and submit to Christ. Come to Christ. Do the right things. Get your education. Do the right things. Go to school. Get you a, a good career going. Do the right things. Take care of your family when you have a family. Do these things. Do these things. Don't follow people. You be the leader. Lead and lead righteously. Do what God wants you to do. And as for me and my house, again, we will serve the Lord. Finally. And I'm done. Finally, there are three gifts you can give to your father and the three gifts you can do to make him feel rejoiceful, to make him happy, to make him elated, to keep him happy, to keep him proud of you, to make him proud of you is number one, listen to him. That means give weight to what he tells you. Give ear to what he tell you and do it. Number two, 
Think the way he thinks. Think the way he thinks. That's using godly wisdom, godly wisdom and knowledge, understanding his thoughts and price thought process, and, which is wisdom. So understanding his thought process, which is wisdom. And number three, act righteously. Do your best to make the right decisions. Do your best to make the right choices. Do your best to do right. If I can go back as a kid and make the right decisions, I would. I would do that to make my father happy. I would do those things. I would do it. I would do it all over again, but I can't. And so, but you can, children, you can now. You can you can start right now. You can make the right decisions. You can stop following culture, what the world is doing. The Bible says be in the world, but not of the world. And so the thing about that, we are in the world, of course. We live in the world, but don't you don't have to do what the world does, okay? You don't have to do what they do. No. Be godly. Get in your word. Get in the word of God, study the word of God, go to church, learn the word of God, get around other young women and other young men who are following God. Get around, change your company, change the, the company you keep. And I'm telling you, God will do a wonder in your life and you will make your father happy. You will make your father so happy. You will have a smiling father at all. He would smile, he would love every single thing you do. I'm telling you, if you just do What's right if you listen and you think, use your brain and you think, you think before you act. So God bless you and I thank you so much. Happy Father's Day again to all the fathers, the perfect gift to make your father happy. Thank you so much once again. And here at True Vine, our motto is with all lowliness and all gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. True Vine, we are the church of love. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at $TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, 1407 Grove Street, Houston, Texas, 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.